Mike Barnett and Jimmy Godomsky are investigating a mystery aircraft wreck just north of the Bermuda Triangle. It's called Mickey's Wreck. It's named for their dive boat captain, Mickey Gressinger, who found it by accident. A lot of times, these wrecks are found by shrimp boats that drag their nets on the ground, and they snag something in their net. December 5th, 1945. Five Navy bombers take off from Fort Lauderdale Naval Air Station on a training patrol designated Flight 19. 90 minutes after takeoff, the planes radio in that they're lost, their compass is out. Then, they vanish somewhere in the Bermuda Triangle. At 7 p.m., less than an hour after all contact is lost with Flight 19, a Martin Mariner rescue plane with call sign Training 49 is sent to search. It, too, vanishes without a trace. No wreckage, no bodies ever recovered to this day. While there are no solid leads on the fate of the five bombers of Flight 19, one big clue could point to the location of the Martin Mariner. Everything came down to a ship called the Gaines Mill that was just sailing through that area. And all reports at around 7.50 that night, they saw a fireball 100 feet high off the ocean floor that burned for 10 minutes. Many believe that fireball was the Martin Mariner. On the first dive, they discovered an engine that matched the Training 49 Martin Mariner. This time, the team will widen their bottom search to see if they can find more wreckage. So I think this one is the, the fuselage area, and this one up here is the actual engine. But there's scattered bait all throughout this whole thing. So there's obviously more metal that's. Mickey's bottom sonar is picking up potential wreckage the team didn't see on their first dive. What's the overall distance from north and south? Like how big of an area are we talking about here? 240 feet. Dive, dive, dive. Then, a shape appears. It's a large piece of wreckage the team didn't see on their first dive. All right. yeah, we got it. So we get down there, we find this wing. Any aircraft wreck is a potential gravesite. The team must proceed with great care. So they decide to use a process called photogrammetry. Jimmy circles the wreckage, taking hundreds of still photos. He'll process these images to create a 3D model of the wreck site that allows a more in-depth analysis. There's only part of a wing here, and obviously it's pretty degraded, so it's clearly been in the water a long time. Then, another potential clue. An unusual structure lies near the wing. But what is it? Mike swims a larger perimeter, but turns up no new clues. Any other wreckage remains buried in the sand. Far the two pieces. Not right. far. Yeah. Uh, like 50 feet. 50 or feet. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We were able to swim from one to another, and then I went back to the wing. Definitely a section of wing. More clues are pointing toward the Martin Mariner. But a grizzled wreck hunter like Mike Barnett needs firmer evidence. We don't have a smoking gun. We don't know what aircraft this engine went to. Uh, we can't rule out the Martin Mariner, so it's going to take a little bit more work. One thing is becoming clearer. The wing has military-grade features. This is a military aircraft. That means permission from the Navy is needed for a more intensive excavation. We know there's other material it has to be there somewhere, most likely buried. Hopefully, we can reach out to the Navy, get some assistance from them. Mike begins the long process of seeking the Navy's official permission for a fuller excavation of the site. But the team does have one last shot to make an ID with evidence in hand, Jimmy's 3D model. 
it may reveal a key detail that Mike and Jimmy missed on their visual inspection. Let me start out with the wing. About 100 to 150 feet to the south of where we had started on that engine site. 100 feet so from the engine. Very close. Defi yeah, but definitely scattered. How long was it? Exposed, I'd say about 10 to 15 feet. Then Jason Harris spots something in the model. I'm really wondering what this piece of material is right there, because it's like has a perfectly round shape in the center. To Jason, this could be the remains of a fuel bladder. If so, that would be a major tell for the Martin Mariner. It had both an 18-cylinder radial engine and a fuel bladder in the wing. And Jason sees more clues in the shape of the wing. This area here, that looks like it's kind of the edges of the wings. I do have a few photos of Martin Mariner. Now, when you look at this wing, Jason, what do you think? Look at the wing. It's rounded. Yeah. Yep. It's, a, it's a rounded wing. I cannot say definitively that this aircraft wing structure belongs to Martin Mariner. What I can say is that there's a possibility, because the wing structure is rounded, similar to the diagram of a Martin Mariner, and it has a rounded wing structure. The 18-cylinder engine, the potential fuel bladder, and the rounded wing are all features of the missing rescue plane. But Jason, Dave, and Wayne agree with Mike Barnett. There simply isn't enough to make a definitive call. So it, is it possible? Yeah. Wow. But we don't have enough to confirm, but we can't rule out either. 